Today News Update. It's Thursday, June 23. A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update. One of Barbados's centenarians died from COVID-19 today. The 101-year-old woman was unvaccinated. Her passing brings total COVID-19-related deaths to 473. Meanwhile, the island recorded 148 new cases of the virus on Wednesday. The cases include 26 persons under the age of 18 and 122 who were 18 years and older. There were 23 people in isolation facilities, while 858 are in home isolation. The total number of fully vaccinated persons is 153,352. That's 56.6% of the total population or 67.1% of the eligible population. Caribbean tourism is on the rebound. In fact, according to the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, the sector is performing better than anticipated and is the second fastest to recover globally, though still below pre-COVID levels. CHT8 President Nicola Madden delivered the upbeat news this morning as she presented the association's performance and outlook survey results. We are seeing that, you know, in terms of our contribution to GDP, we have moved up to 9.1% or in the region of 39.3 billion US dollars. So that's a positive change. We continue to see that we are almost back to full employment level at 2.35 million versus the 2.75 million that we had in 2019. But of course, we have to continue to look at our visitor expenditure, which is still you know, behind our 2019 levels. And we are hoping that in 2022, as things begin to change, we will see that bump up significantly. On the domestic side, we are seeing almost a full return to 2019 levels, and that's very good news. So the WTCC is predicting travel and tourism GDP is forecasted to grow at an average of 5.5% annually. So that is meaning that there is a lot of opportunity and pent-up demand for the Caribbean tourism to take advantage of. The tourism executive also reported that summer bookings are up. Summer is actually going to be nice and sunny. <laughs> we are seeing robust demand for the Caribbean. And as we have from our partner Forward Keys, you are seeing that we are actually, for the June to August period, ahead in the Caribbean of our 2019 airline arrivals in terms of what is forecasted and on the books by upwards of 2%. This is significant news for us in the Caribbean. And we have the airlift, our airline partners have been returning to most destinations, some not as much as others, but uh, we think with the news that we are seeing and as travel restrictions continue to be lifted, of course, we've seen where the US has recently remove the testing requirements to go back to the US and Canada is coming closely behind to do so. And that is going to make travels for summer even more attractive, particularly for the family market, which is you know, one of our major markets for, for summer, just from a cost of travel point of view, as well as of course, groups and other, other markets that are more price sensitive. So we are very excited to report that summer is going to be robust and we are seeing it um, when we speak to our hotel association and we speak to our members, they are seeing the demand and they are responding as well. The executive producer of one of the biggest shows to be staged here this crop over season is pleading for an ease in COVID-19 protocols for the entertainment sector. Orlando Newton, one of the principals behind Rise Barbados, insisted on Wednesday that the requirements for the industry are too tough. But we're asking for anyone that can assist in making these products successful, not only for rights, but for the entire industry. Don't care small things that can help, you can help. And also because of what is happening, we are still the only industry that's being mandated to follow the Asia protocols that are in place, where our patrons have to be tested or vaccinated in order to enter. And also all workers in our industry, which have already lost a lot of workers because of the lack of work in our industry over the last two years, are now on the protocols that we have to be vaccinated and tested to actually work on the event, which is quite difficult. Regional and international news is coming up after this short break. Cure oxygen is way more than just water. 
we infuse pristine water with over one billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge. From strengthening your immune system to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. Join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. To regional news, Grenadians are now anxiously awaiting the outcome of today's general elections. Hundreds of voters turned out at the polls to select their new government. It's a straight fight between the incumbent Dr. Keith Mitchell of the new National Party and the National Democratic Congress led by Dickon Mitchell. The poll is being observed by the Organization of American States and head of mission Rosina Wilshire was satisfied with today's vote. I, with my two colleagues here, witnessed the opening of the polls beginning with uh, the Anglican High School and we have been to polling stations in St. George East and the South. And what we noticed was that the polls opened on time. The presiding of every, all the personnel were on, were present and the materials available. We saw the long lines. Um, the morning lines were actually quite long, which indicated that many people were voting before they went to work. Uh, generally, it was extremely peaceful and dis people were disciplined. The polling officers did their jobs and explained what was necessary to persons. So what is clear is that there is a high level of participation so far that we are witnessing in this election. On the international front, the United States Supreme Court has deemed unconstitutional a decades-old New York state law that requires gun owners to show proper cause to carry a concealed handgun for self-defense in public. Arrests for gun crimes in New York are at a 28-year high. A racially motivated shooting in the city of Buffalo recently left 10 people dead. And now, gun control activists say the violence is only going to get worse. The Supreme Court has ruled New York's law requiring anyone who wants to carry a concealed handgun show what's known as proper cause is unconstitutional. Justice Clarence Thomas wrote the 63-page decision. He says the Constitution protects an individual's right to carry a handgun for self-defense outside the home. The decision was based on a case brought by the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association. Criminals are the ones that are causing the crimes in the cities, not, not legal gun owners, not lawful people. It's a decision New York's elected officials were bracing for, and they didn't hold back their criticism at the court's decision. This decision isn't just reckless, it's reprehensible. It's not what New Yorkers want. And we should have the right of determination of what we want to do in terms of our gun laws in our state. This keeps me up at night. New York's mayor says it will set back efforts to rein in gun crime and gun deaths. Former police officer Kirk Burkhalter agrees. The impact will be more guns on the streets of New York, and I am of the opinion that does not make a city this populous safer. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper email updates or like us on Facebook. Sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on our Zoom Media and Bus Terminals, as well as screen play at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.